this week on whether to release that four page memo that you had a big hand in writing that alleges abuse and bias inside the FBI and the Justice Department. Uh, as I re discussed with Mark Short, the Washington Post reports today the president wants to have the memo released. Do you agree with that? Um, I do. I'm sorry that we're to this point. Um, this memo is nothing but a, a um, the distilling, uh, the, the reducing of thousands of pages of documents provided to us by the department and the bureau. So there's nothing in this memo that the department is not already aware of. Um, if you think your viewers want to know whether or not the dossier was used in court proceedings, whether or not it was vetted before it was used, whether or not it's ever been vetted, if you are interested in who paid for the dossier, if you're interested in Christopher Steele's relationship with Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee, then yes, you'll want the memo to come out. If you're Adam Schiff, who is... Um, consistently wrong uh, when it comes to issues of disclosure. He didn't want us to find out any of this information, Chris. He, he fought. In fact, GPS went to court. Fusion GPS went to court to keep us from finding out that the Democrats paid for the dossier. So if you're Adam Schiff, of course you don't want the information to come out. You didn't want us to find it in the first place. This memo um, answers what I think are really legitimate questions, and I do think the FBI should look at it before uh, before it is released. And I have provided that counsel to Chairman Nunes, and I think that he has taken that under advisement. So I want to play face up poker. I want the Bureau to know everything that's in the memo. Um, I think you'll be surprised. It is not a hit piece on the department and the FBI. I would not have participated in let it me, if that's let, what let, it was. Let me, let me pick up on this because the reports are, and you've kind of indicated that in your answer, that the memo centers on this question of the FISA application, the, the Department of Justice FBI application uh, in 2016 for a warrant to conduct an electronic surveillance against this fellow, then Trump campaign manager Carter Page. Your complaint according to reports, is that you say that when they uh, made that application, they didn't talk about the, the role of uh, the Russia dossier, and especially the fact that it was opposition research paid for by the Clinton campaign. The Democrats, and yes, Adam Schiff is leading the charge, say you're cherry-picking the information. One, that the, the, the FISA warrant on it, Carter Page, is not as central as you're making it. And two, that there was a lot more in the application than just the dossier, that the FBI did not rely just on the dossier to get the warrant. Well, I, I can't even confirm for you that there is a FISA warrant, and I can't confirm for you who it's on because that is classified, and I'm not going to disseminate classified information. I'll just ask you again, are you interested in whether or not the world's premier law enforcement agency relied on a work product produced, paid for by the Democrat National Committee? Are you interested but, in but, whether but or the, not I guess the question, all... I, the question I'm just asking is this, sir. <laughs> and, and yes, I can understand you're not going to confirm it, but we're talking about the FISA warrant of Carter Page. Did they rely just on the dossier or did they rely on a lot of other material? Uh, well, for me to answer that question is confirmation that there is one. I will t let me ask you this, Chris. Um, if they relied on it half, is, is that significant enough for the American people to know? If they relied on it at all, do you want to know that? If you're the judge, do you want to know if a third of what you're providing to the court was paid for by a political opponent? So whether, they, whether it was relied upon 80 percent or 20 percent, do you want to know? that the Democrat National Committee paid for material that was never vetted that was included in a court proceeding. Do you want to know whether or not the primary source in these court proceedings had a bias against one candidate? Do I'm, you want to know whether or not he said he'd do anything to keep that candidate from becoming I wanna, elected president? I, I want to, I uh, and I don't mean to interrupt, sir, but I got two more questions I want to get to, and we're running out of time, because I want to address those texts between Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, uh, who were two key figures in both the Clinton and Trump investigations. In February of 2016, during the Clinton email probe, Page sends this text. One more thing, she, Clinton, might be our next president. The last thing you need, us going in there loaded for bear. You think she's going to remember or care that it was more DOJ, Department of Justice, than FBI? Strzok responds, agreed. I called Bill and relayed what we discussed. He agrees. I will email you and redacted same. The real question I have is that there's no question that is a deeply troubling political bias expressed by two FBI officials. 
I guess the question I have is, did Strzok and Page have the power to protect Clinton on the one hand and to get Trump on the other? Um, well, they, they, did they have the power to protect her? Um, the decision not to charge her was made before she was ever interviewed. Uh, how would you like that deal, Chris? I mean, how, no, how, I like how that deal, but like I guess the go? question is, was that yeah. just Peter Strzok or was that a lot of other people who weren't party to these clearly biased and outrageous texts? Well, I think what you'll see, and, and, and one reason the Judiciary Committee and Oversight is investigating, is there was tension between the Department of Justice and the FBI. But Peter Strzok was the lead investigator. That's who interviewed Hillary Clinton. So th these same two people whose bias was so insidious that Bob Mueller fired them the second he found out about it, their bias existed the entire time. These same two people who were so biased they should be kicked to the curb immediately were the ones interviewing Hillary Clinton editing the memo to take out references to President Obama, editing the memo to take out the reference to grossly negligent. So, I, no, right. I can't prove to you that they were the final decision makers, nor do I have to. What I have to prove to you is two really important people hated him, would have done anything to protect her, and thank God Michael Horowitz found out about him while they were investigating the president. I want to ask you one last question. We're running out of time here. There's clearly some troubling evidence and, and clearly the, the, the struck page memos are, are deeply troubling and, you know, go to it in investigating that. There also have been some issues of potential hype uh, by Republicans. And I want to give you an example. This week, Senator Ron Johnson brought up the issue of a secret society inside the Justice Department. Here he is. What this is all about is further evidence of corruption, more than bias, but corruption at the highest levels of the FBI and that secret society. But then we saw the only text on this that Page wrote to Strzok the day after the election. Are you even going to give out your calendars? He'd apparently bought Russian calendars as a gag. Seems kind of depressing. Maybe it should just be the first meeting of the secret society, which led to this exchange. This text message seems to be a comment about secret society was in jest. Do you agree that it appears to be it was in jest? It's a real possibility. Question, Congressman. Final question. I'm going to have to ask, ask you to answer briefly. Don't Republicans hurt their credibility on real issues of bias when they make such a big deal about secret societies and palace coups? Yes. Uh, Republicans are the best I've ever seen at taking good facts and overstating them and therefore changing the narrative. Um, I don't know what they meant by secret society. I didn't use the phrase. Um, it is fair to ask them. Uh, but if it were a joke, uh, Chris, then, then was it also a joke to mention the insurance policy? Was it also a joke to talk about impeachment the morning after President Trump won? Was it also a joke to say, I have no interest in participating in an investigation if he's going to be cleared? There's a pattern, and Republicans are better served by letting the text speak for themselves. I have no idea what they meant by that. I don't know if it was a joke or not. It's not my job to figure it out. These two witnesses need to come in and tell us what they meant by it. And everything they else they said over the course of 18 months, Republicans would be well served. Let the text speak for themselves. Let the jury make up their mind and quit engaging in hyperbole, which we seem to do a lot. Uh, and we look forward to the investigation continuing. There are a lot of legitimate issues here. Congressman Gowdy, thank you. Thanks for sharing yes, your weekend with us. We'll follow all the developments this week and in the future.